so this is a very interesting question from one of her students uh, because she is confused with some of the terms that she comes across when she learns data science or machine learning or blogs or uh, listens to a few videos and stuff like that. So uh, this is a very common confusion for somebody who is new to the field because there are so many terms thrown around with different meanings and interpretations. And some of these terms come from statistics, some of them come from core machine learning, some of them come from business use cases and stuff like that. So I'll try to break them, break each of them and try to explain them in simple terms so that it would be easier for our students to understand the difference between these two terms. So the first two terms are from statistics. They're inferential statistics and descriptive statistics, right? So uh, in our course, we learned, we actually learned most of the technique, most of the important techniques in both inferential and descriptive statistics without explicitly using these textbookish terms. But what they mean is this. First, let's take the descriptive statistics. What does the word descriptive here mean? So to put it simply, descriptive statistics help you, as the word descriptive says, they're trying to describe the key properties of the data. For example, if I'm given some, some sample of data, as we learned in our course, if somebody gives you a simple sample of data, descriptive statistics will help us compute some key properties of the data. For example, mean. Mean tells me what is the average value, right? Or what is the central value of sorts? Or median tells me the central value within this whole data. Similarly, standard deviation, right? Tells me what is the, or variance for that matter, tells me what is the spread amongst this data, right? As we discussed in the course in lots of detail, right? Similarly, kurtosis, skewness, all of these things tell me about the properties of the data, the minimum value, the maximum value, the median, the x percentile, for example, 10th percentile or 90th percentile, 95th percentile, all of these are descriptive statistics because in a nutshell, they're describing some key aspects or properties of your data. That's why they're called descriptive statistics. Now, the second one is called inferential statistics. Inference, what does the word inference mean in English? Inference basically means a process of coming up with a conclusion or reaching a conclusion about, about, your, uh, about, about some physical process. For example, one of the very important parts of inferential statistics is hypothesis testing that we discussed in lots of detail again in the course. For example, if I want to infer about, or if I want to inf if I want to say, okay, given, given students from two different classes, are their heights different? Is there, if I want to infer that fact, or if I want to infer that statistically, whether the height between students of two different classes is different or not, right? There I use null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, my permutation testing, my resampling, all of these techniques that we discussed in hypothesis testing. So a lot of statistical tests, typically the null hypo typically your hypothesis test or what we've seen, KS test is something that we have seen, right? Wherein we can use KS test to infer whether a distribution belongs to Gaussian distribution or not, right? So all these are inferential statistics because I'm trying to infer I'm not trying to describe data. Remember, I'm trying to infer properties of the data statistically or infer some fact. I shouldn't say properties of the data because I'm trying to infer whether something, infer a fact, right? Using statistical means. So in a nutshell, descriptive statistics has all of your percentiles, quantiles, median, uh, mean, standard deviation, kurtosis, skewness, all of those things. Inferential statistics fundamentally has all of your tests. Right, your hypothesis testing, t testing, your uh, z test, your ks test, Anderson Darling test, all of these tests are in your inferential statistics. So, th these are two terms from statistics, and it's, it's important to understand them. Right, we didn't use these terms explicitly because these are typically textbookish terms, but now I hope you have a better understanding. If you know what descriptive means, so remember that descriptive means describing something, inferential means coming up with some conclusion or inferring something at the end of the analysis. So the next important concept is discriminative models versus generative models, right? This is a, this is a very important distinction in machine learning. So descriptive models in a nutshell, so the word, descri sorry, not descriptive. 
The next important terms are discriminative models and generative models in machine learning. This is not in statistics, this is in machine learning. So the word discriminative, what does that mean? It means to discriminate between two different sets of points. So discriminative models, to, to understand them very, very simply, are basically models that build a boundary or that discriminate between your positive labeled points and negative labeled points, as we discussed in the course. For example, a logistic regression finds a hyperplane that separates positive points from negative points. Similarly, an SVM discriminates between your positive points and negative points by building a hard boundary or a soft boundary in a soft SVM-like setting. Okay, again, all these models we have discussed in lots of detail in the course itself. Okay, so that's what discriminative models are. Generative models, on the other hand, are very interesting. They're very powerful also. So generative models try to model the distribution of data. For example, suppose you have a bunch of features, okay, represented with capital X, and you have an output variable Y. What does your total data mean? Your total data mean basically both your X and Y. If you can somehow build a probabilistic or, or a distribution, a probability distribution for your data set, which is if you can build a probability distribution for X comma Y, this is often called as joint distribution, right? Because you're trying to predict. So basically, if, if, you, if you have the probability distribution of X comma Y, you're basically your total data set. If you have a probability distribution for your data set, right? You can generate more points from this probability distribution. Imagine if I have a probability, if I know the probability distribution of, let's say, a single variable, let's say, a, a scalar value, let's say, assume. If I know the probability distribution of a single scalar value, like for example, let's assume it's a Gaussian distribution with mean zero and variance one. I can generate more points from the distribution, right? That's why it's called the generative process. Because if I know the distribution, if I know the parameters of the distribution, I can generate data from this distribution. Similarly, instead of one scalar variable being Gaussian distributed, imagine if I know the distribution of my whole data, including features and output variable. If I know the distribution of my whole data set D, which is a combination of X and Y, if I know the whole distribution, I can generate more data from this. Right? So if you are building or if you're building a probabilistic model where you are estimating the distribution of data, such a model is called generative model and it's called generative model because once I know the distribution, I can generate more points from this distribution. For example, take naive base, which is a very popular generative model that we discussed in the course. While, gen while, while naive base can be used to classify points as positive or negative labeled points, Right? That's one of the tasks that we do right? with naive base. But naive base is achieving that by modeling the distribution of data. Right? That's, that's what it's trying to do. So naive base is a generative model. Right? So it's one of the most popular and simple generative models that we come across. Similarly, there is something called the Gaussian mixture models, which is a probabilistic or a generative equivalent of k-means clustering. We discussed k-means clustering in lots of details in the course. So there is an equivalent method called, or, or a related method, I shouldn't say equivalent. There is a related method called Gaussian mixture models, which is a probabilistic and generative variation to k-means. Okay, that's also a very popular, uh, especially textbooks typically cover that in lots of detail as a generative model, right? So to put it simply, discriminative models build boundaries between positive label data and negative label data while generative models model the distribution of data so that you can generate more points from this distribution if you want right i hope this is clear the next term which is often used in business blogs and stuff like that basically businessy term or business language is predictive modeling which is a very very broad term predictive modeling basically means a model that can predict future outcomes. That's all predictive modeling means. And that could mean your classification techniques, your regression techniques, your time series analysis techniques. Basically, predictive models 
is a term in, in, in business language, which means building a model that can predict future outcomes. Of course, if I build a classification technique to detect, let's say, cancerous cells, if I have a new patient in the future with some, with some tests being conducted on the patient, I can determine whether the patient has cancer or not with a reasonable certainty. So then it becomes a predictive model. So in the whole of business language, predictive modeling boils down to being able to predict, so being able to build a model. So it's called predictive modeling, right? So it's basically building models that can predict outcomes. And that includes both classification, regression, and uh, time series analysis. All of these things fit into that framework. The next term that the student asks does is something called as a topic model. So a topic model is a very interesting uh, subtopic in nature language processing, right? So a topic model is basically saying, given a paragraph of text or a page of text or, a, or an article, let's say, can I, can I find out what topics does this text belong to? For example, let's say you might have a news article. I want to determine, I want to determine what, how much of this text is talking about politics or what is the probability that this text belongs to the topic of, prob of uh, sorry, of, uh, of politics. How much, what is the probability that this text is talking about sports or what is the probability this topic is talking about science and technology or what is the probability that this is, this, this article is talking about business, All right? So your business, science and technology, politics, sports, all these are topics. And given, uh, given an article, you can map an article to the topics that it's talking about. Either you can map it to one major topic that it's talking about, or you can break it up, right? And say that this, this article, 90% of the article is talking about politics, 10% of it is talking about business. Right, So you can break it up. So topic modeling effectively means being able to assign various topics which are related to a given article in a natural language processing setting. So this is all about natural language or text processing paradigm. So I hope these definitions that our students have asked are clear now with these examples. And it's very easy. I mean, all of us get confused with these terms because... We may not use it. So the way I, I understand these terms is I take the key term like generative. Okay, what does generative mean here? For example, in generative uh, models, generative models basically means I should be able to generate data. To generate data, I need to know the distribution of data. Discriminative. What does discrimination means? To separate two things off. Okay, inferential. I want to infer some properties of the data right through null hypothesis and hypothesis testing descriptive it's trying to describe about the data topic modeling i want to find topics in the data similarly predictive modeling predictive modeling is a business term that talks about being able to make make predictions in the future by building some models simple definitions nothing fancy here 